Hello grade 11s, in today's video we're going to start off the topic electromagnetism, we're focusing on the introduction to electromagnetism and using the right hand rule. Let's go. Let's jump right into this topic. First of all, electromagnetism, okay, the name tells you everything that you need to know about the topic. Okay, not everything, but it does give you a big hint. Basically, the name electromagnetism tells us that we are dealing with a branch of physics that deals with the interaction between electric fields, that's where the electro comes from, and electric current, okay, so the movement of charges, so that's electro, and magnetism, magnetic fields. So it's the interaction between electric currents, electric fields, and magnetic fields. Okay, this is one of the four fundamental interactions in nature. It's very, very important. It has caused us to be able to use it in so many things in our society that we would not be able to survive without. So, starting with magnetic fields. Now, this is something that you should have learned in grade 10, but a magnetic field is a region in space in which a magnet or a ferromagnetic material like iron, cobalt, nickel, those are ferromagnetic elements, so a material made out of those will experience a force. So it's a region in space in which a magnetic material will experience a force. So it'll move. Above me, you can see a magnet and the magnetic field lines. You need to be able to draw this. You also need to know that the direction of a magnetic field outside the magnet, so I'm not talking about inside the magnet, I'm talking about outside the magnet, is from the north to the south. So take a look at the field lines. Take a look at which way the arrows are going. It's going from the north to the south. Very, very important. So entering at the south, going away from the north. You need to know how to draw this. You need to know that the field lines can never cross. You need to know how the shape of the field lines look. You need to understand magnetic fields. Something else that we learned in grade 10 and grade 11 is electric fields. So we know that a charge, so a charged object, like a charged sphere, produces an electric field in which another charge can experience a force. So if you take a look at my two charges above here, they create their own electric fields and their electric fields also interact with one another. You should also know that an electric current is flow of charge through a conductor. Okay, so we've recapped magnetic field, we've recapped electric field and electric current. Now the interaction between all of this is what gives me this new topic, electromagnetism. These are the important discoveries that was made around the electromagnetism topic. And we will be going through all of these in this video and videos to come. So just so you know, this is basically like a summary of electromagnetism. The first thing that was discovered, and one of the first things that you need to understand, is that if I have a wire, so a conducting wire, that is carrying an electric current, remember current is the flow of charge, so we have little charges flowing through my wire, that wire will have a magnetic field that surrounds it. So a current carrying conductor creates its own magnetic field. And that is the first discovery listed over here. A magnetic field is produced around a current carrying conductor. So what this means is if I set up a circuit and I have a conductor, whether it's a straight conductor or one that's bent into a wire or a coil, we cannot see it with our eyes, but as soon as there's current flowing, as soon as there's a flow of charge or current in that conductor, there's a magnetic field that surrounds that conductor. Obviously, we can't see it with our naked eyes, but there is. If we have a straight current carrying conductor like this one over here, you can see it's a straight line like that. The shape of the field are concentric circles that are perpendicular to the conductor, basically to the flow of current. So look at the concentric circles, the circle, 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 circle. And we will be using what we call the right hand rule to determine the direction of that magnetic field. So how it works is you take your right hand. Now, just be aware that this is actually my, my right hand, but because it's mirrored in the camera, this it looks like my left hand. So I'm going to be using my right hand, which from what it seems to use my right hand. So you take your right hand, remember your right hand, not your left hand, it's called the right hand rule. And this right hand rule works for a straight current carrying wire. Your thumb is the direction of the current. Okay, so my thumb is pointing up, the direction of the current is going up. And my fingers are curled in a particular direction. The direction that they're curled in is the direction of the magnetic field around that 
current or that loop. And imagine your fingernails as little arrows. So it can show you that the current is going this way, like curling around like that. See if you can figure out by matching up to these pictures how that works. I hope that it makes sense that it depends. So I'm, I'm Meridia, so it's going to be confusing to you. But use your hand. See if you can make sense. And you agree with the fact that the current um, is going up and the direction of the magnetic field is going like this. Now, obviously, the stuff that we're talking about happens in a 3D space. So what I mean is it's not flat on paper. It's a 3D kind of situation that we're looking at. But we need to be able to represent it on a 2D piece of paper. So how we do that is as follows. Remember, you use your right hand in order to figure out the direction of the current flow and therefore the magnetic field. If your current is coming out of the page, okay, so the current is coming out of the page towards you, okay, so if your finger is like this, current is coming this way, you draw a dot. A dot represents current is coming out of the page. Across, so this one over here, means that the current is going into the page. So it depends on the scenario. Now use your right hand. Right now, while you're watching the video, if the current is coming out of the page towards you, use your right hand and point your thumb towards yourself. Okay, so your thumb should be pointing at your face right now. Look at which way your fingers are curled. They are curling this way. And I hope that you understand that this direction has got a name. This direction is called anti-clockwise. I hope that makes sense. Remember, a clock ticks like this. So a clock will go, you know, 12, 1, 2, 3, and so on. A clock moves like this, clockwise. So clocks go like this. So anti-clockwise is the opposite. So this is anti-clockwise direction. Now rotate your thumb so that it's pointing away from you into the screen. Then I hope you can see that the direction of the magnetic field reverses. It is now clockwise. And that is basically how you represent it on 2D paper. And you need to know how to represent it on 2D paper. Now, it does get a little bit more difficult when we take that straight current carrying conductor and we bend it into a loop or a coil. So remember, it's like taking something that is straight. So this is straight. And now we're bending it into like a kind of like a loop situation. You know what I mean? Each arm of my loop, because a loop has two arms, each arm of my loop or each arm of my coil will have its own magnetic field that surrounds it. So you can see on this picture over here, we've coiled or looped the conductor like this. You can see that there's a little magnetic field that forms over here, concentric circles, and another one that forms over here in concentric circles. Again, we can use our right hand rule to figure out which way these direction of the magnetic field will go. Just keep in mind that over here, they tell me the current is flowing up. So your right hand, your thumb must point up. And then you can see the direction of the magnetic field is going this way, which is anti-clockwise. Then as the current turns, your thumb must be pointing down because the current is now going down that way. So the current is going up and then down, basically. And when your thumb points downwards, you can see that the magnetic field reverses direction. You also need to apply the right hand rule to a solenoid. So a sol solenoid, as you can see from the picture, is basically a coil of wire. So you've got your current carrying conductor and it's wrapped like this around and around and around and around. That basically forms a solenoid in simple form. And how we work out or how we use the right hand rule for a solenoid is you curl your fingers in the direction of the current, okay? You curl your fingers in the direction of the current, so it's slightly different. Remember, when we had a straight current carrying conductor or even a loop, like this situation over here or this situation over here, remember your thumb was the current direction and your curled fingers was the magnetic field. For a solenoid, it's different. For a solenoid, your fingers are curling in the direction of the current and that makes sense because a solenoid is like a coil of wire so the current goes around and around and around the coil basically the current flows around and around and around so your fingers must be curled in the direction of the current 
and your thumb will then point in the direction of the magnetic field inside the solenoid. Now, this is very important to remember, and I often forget this. I have to keep reminding myself, my students forget this, but your thumb points from, your thumb will point towards the north. Your thumb will point towards the north. So here's a picture of how that looks. So your thumb is pointing towards the north end. It's the direction of the magnetic field inside the solenoid, and your fingers are curled in the direction of the current. So as you can see here, this person's finger is pointing, or this, per this person's thumb rather, is pointing towards the north. So the thumb is pointing towards the north, and you can see the fingers are curling in this direction, which means that the current goes down the back end of the solenoid. It's going down the back end. You have to think in 3D now. And it's coming up around the front end. So here you can see the arrows going up. So it's coming up the front end and down and around the back end. Think of his fingers as pointing which way the current is going. This is not easy to do, to be honest. You have to think in 3D. So take your thumb, your right hand right now. Your thumb on your right hand must point towards the north. So your thumb is going to be pointing this way. And now look at which way your fingers are curling. Your fingers should be curling up and around, which means, again, that the current on the back end of this magnet, we can't see it, think in 3D, the current is going down around the back and it's coming up around the front. I hope that makes sense. Because remember, this thing is wrapping around and around and around. So the current goes up around the front and then down around the back and then out over here. And it's coming in over here. Here's a much, much, much better picture. So look at the thumb. The thumb of the right hand is pointing towards the north. Just remember that as a rule. And I'll take a look at the way in which this person's fingers are curled. So imagine the fingernails are little arrows. So you can see here, remember, this wire is wrapping all the way around. It's a solenoid. So we can't see it, but the wire exists at the back here if I had to draw it in in dots. So what's happening is the current is coming up around the front of the solenoid like that. So you can see the arrows pointing. And then when it reaches the back, it's going down the back. So up the front, down the back. I hope that helps. In the next video, we're going to be looking at electromagnetic induction, which is super, super, super important to this topic. So I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone. Subscribe for more.